Having some issues with my diesel heater. Just wondering if the exhaust is supposed to be glowing red like that. Oh, that's flames. I'm glad it was out here when that happened because that could have been very bad. Wonderful. What does the internet need? One more ignorant asshole spreading misinformation about Chinese diesel heaters. Hey everyone, my name is Joel, this is Lowered Expectations, and this is my video about my Chinese diesel heater. I bought this thing on the recommendation of many YouTubers who were spreading misinformation, and I planned on burning waste oil on this thing. So, what was supposed to be a quick unboxing video, and then me showing you guys how wonderful this thing is, is actually going to turn into a series of videos showing you guys the disaster that this thing turned out to be. Now keep in mind there are some really good YouTubers who do very in-depth videos, a lot of testing. I will post the name of one of them right here. But there is 10 times more misinformation about these things and there are good information. A lot of people comparing them to diesel engines and just talking about a whole bunch of nonsense that, uh, yeah, just talking points that are being repeated from a video that they watched and now they're making a video just repeating what they saw or heard. Anyway, this is gonna turn into a series. This first video is basically going to be me unboxing it, firing it up, thinking that it's wonderful, and then having a couple of issues. In the next video, I'll show you guys how I almost burnt my garage down. What's up everyone and welcome to Lowered Expectations, the channel where I post extras, outtakes, and random nonsense. Also stuff that is not related to my primary channel, which is the Joel Arsenal YouTube channel where I post mostly jet ski content, uh, modifying and uh, riding of jet skis and other motorized things. So this video, <laughs> see my cat climbing the ladder in the background, hopefully that ladder doesn't fall. Anyway, this video is gonna be about a diesel heater. I already have a 200,000 BTU floor heating system and an 80,000 BTU uh, Mr. Heater that's just up out of view here. I am a small engine mechanic and I collect a lot of waste oil. And I've discovered that that waste oil that I deliver to the dump actually isn't quote unquote recycled. They actually burn it as fuel. And so, Anyway, completely unrelated subject. I have lots of fuel available to me. This is a eight kilowatt heater and I am going to be testing it, of course, on diesel only for legal reasons. But um, yeah, I'm gonna unbox it right now. I'm going to see what's going on inside there. There are a bunch of other videos on the internet about this, so. Other people have probably done uh, better, more depth, more in-depth, detailed uh, reviews and tests of this thing, but this is me doing it. So if you wanna see me do it, this is where you'd see that. <clears throat> All right, I know you guys can't see a whole lot from there, so maybe what I'll do is actually move the camera and unbox it on the bench. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy, do you wanna say hi to the people? Do you want to say hi to the people? No? You want to go, you want to go up is what you want, eh? He always wants to go up. Eh? Good boy. Let's get this box open, see what's inside. I have watched one other video, I think, of somebody doing an unboxing, so. I kind of know what to expect, somewhat. All right, we've got some hose clamps, and I believe this thing is an air inlet filter, basically just to keep mice out. We've got, uh, I believe this is an air duct, or air pipe. And 
also, I believe it, this is an exhaust pipe. Corrugated, and then I do not know what this thing is. Kind of looks like protective heat stuff or something. Anyway, we'll get that out of the way. I don't know if there's, I don't know if this is the back or the bottom. Looks like that's the bottom. Okay, there's more, more stuff in here. Got what looks like a little muffler. I have no idea what that is. And then a, <laughs> a manual that looks like it's probably not going to be very useful for anything. Except for starting fires. Okay, so this is the bottom, which is kind of weird. They have the exhaust on the bottom. Interesting. <laughs> My cat has found the box and is going to play with it. All right, there is one more bag of stuff here, which is, oh, that's a remote control. And I believe that is all the bits and pieces. It turns out they actually use a fairly small fuel line. And so I'm going to be installing a filter, but all I have is this filter here. It's actually a little bit too big, but I hope that I'm going to be able to stretch the fuel line over. So I'm just going to put this in line here and hope that that works out for me. Here we go. Here goes nothing. I've seen videos of people burning all sorts of horrible things in these. And uh, I assumed that it had some sort of filtration on it, but what I will probably end up doing eventually is just taking the heater out. You can actually just buy the heater unit itself. This comes with a frame and the fuel tank for a few extra dollars. So I decided to get the whole package. But uh, what I'll probably do eventually is use my own or use a, a different fuel cell. That way I can have a giant tank and uh, mount this somewhere where it's hopefully not terribly conspicuous. But first I want to try it out and see how it actually works. I pulled a battery out of the uh, one of the jet skis outside. The only one that actually has a battery, I pulled it out. <laughs> this is probably the oldest diesel fuel in existence. I pulled this out of a generator probably about five years ago, and it was old when I pulled it out of the generator. I need to hook this up to a battery. The connectors just come like, well, there's no connectors. It just comes like this. So I'm gonna see if I can find some connectors. Read the manual and see if we can get it to pump. First thing you gotta do is get the fuel to pump through. So boot up operation. In the shutdown state, press the Power button for two seconds. Equipment start up with display shown above. Shutdown operation. Uh, six gears. Hmm. So six settings apparently. Use the back or forward arrows. Manual oiling operation. In the shutdown state, press and hold the up and down key for two seconds at the same time. Manually control the oil pump for oil injection and stop oil injection after releasing the key. Please use caution. Plateau model operation. Okay. Um, I 
I'm going to remove the cover so that I can actually see where the oil is, where the diesel fuel is, because I have no idea how long it will take to pump through. Oh boy, she's gonna fall off the stand for sure. Okay, let's It's not even into the pump yet. <laughs> that is going to take a minute. I smell diesel. I smell burning diesel. <laughs> oh my God, it's working. Okay, I'm going to shut this down. All right, I'm going to actually set this up so that it's feeding out my vent because this is quite obviously going to cause uh, some major <laughs> asphyxiation issues. So I will come back when I have something figured out. There's potential for the exhaust to come out there. It could also come out here or down there, so those are things that I'm worried about. I'm going to have to keep an eye on. It's starting to ramp up. H3. H5. It's a little slow to respond. The current temperature in the garage is 14 degrees. You can see the thermostat here. 14 degrees Celsius. Time for a bit of an update on the heater. I've been running it now for several hours. It is 7.30. I just put a little bit more fuel in it. It still, it hardly looked like it had burnt anything, but I added some anyway because I'm going in the house for the evening. I'm probably gonna turn it down a little bit. It has five different settings. Uh, I'll try to show you guys up on the screen there just to see if the camera will pick it up better because on the remote it actually flickers on screen so if I try to show you guys the temperature let's see we'll go down can we go down yeah you can see it's flickering on the screen there so I'm at setting three you can hear it slow down. Actually, I'll go down to setting one. I'm not sure where I'll leave it overnight, but uh, I had it turned down while I was putting fuel in it. And well, it's uh, 19 degrees Celsius. It is currently negative five Celsius outside. 
So it is able to maintain temperature pretty good. I assume that it's probably not going to be able to keep the garage at 19 degrees Celsius when it's like minus 15 outside or minus 19 outside. This is the decal that's on the side of it. The name of it is the car parking heater. Fuel is intended to be diesel. Model is XMZ. Dash D1. It is 12 volts, 40 watts. I can figure out how many amps it is by doing the math on that. And 8 kilowatts of heat energy. Let's see, does the screen flicker for you guys here? No, but it's quite glary. It shows air going in and then the hot air coming out. Indicates that the fan is running. It has uh, something saying that the the, there's a flame and something about the battery something about a temperature thing so a whole bunch of stuff that I'm not really sure about it has an OK button up down power and then settings button over here so I'll have to do a little bit of reading on this because I have no idea what uh, any of this stuff really does and so I can turn the heat up I think I'll turn it up to like setting three That is six. It's kind of weird, down is up and up is down. So I'm gonna leave it at three overnight and uh, we'll see if there's any fuel left in it in the morning and we'll also see what the temperature is on the thermostat in the morning. I decided to do a little math and try to figure out how many amps it's drawing. So if we assume that the 40 watts is actually correct it is 40 watts divided by 12 volts equals 3.3333333333 amps so it's pulling about three and a half amps when it's running and the current temperature in here is 18 degrees so it is quite comfortable in here i think the outside temperature is only around minus five or minus six something like that i'm going to take the camera up there and we'll look together to see how much fuel it's actually burned hopefully there's enough light up there because i didn't bring my phone with me i've unplugged the battery charger to try to get rid of the noise from that and uh yeah <laughs> so basically it's burnt almost nothing I've seen a few videos on YouTube and people claim that they burn cooking oil and all sorts of different things in them so yeah anyway that is good to know that is very good to know I will make good use of this it'll save me a lot of money in heating my garage so that is definitely good. I paid, I don't think I actually mentioned this. I ended up paying $183, something like that. Under $190 Canadian. And uh, so yeah, the amount of heating that that, the heating cost to heat the garage is probably about $200 a month. So this thing will pay for itself in a month or less especially if it gets cold. But uh, anyway, that is gonna do it for now. I'll update you guys when I have more to update. All right, folks, it's 10.30 a.m. the following morning. Let's see what we're dealing with here. I did turn it down to one. It's 15, 15 degrees. Let's see how much fuel's left in it. About a quarter of a tank. Fuel level's right there. Cool. 
So I turned the heater up to six, I filled up the tank, and shortly after that, it actually went into overheat mode, and it shut down. Now I've got it started back up. I'm not sure exactly why it overheated. It might be the fuel that I'm using, or it might be the fact that I jumped from one to six abruptly. I don't really know what happened, but anyway, it shut down. It's good to know that it has built-in safeties, but uh, kind of curious as to why it, uh, why it overheated. So I'm not going to set it at six unless I'm out here. I'll set it back to five. There we go. That was the pump. So it's going to start ramping up. Okay, so it takes, takes a minute to actually fire up, is all it is. You can hear it light. I'm gonna take a step outside and see if the exhaust coming out is smoky. see anything. It was steaming earlier. Not, not working for some reason. There we go, let's try it again. Shut off again. Not sure what is going on, but I think it flooded. As you guys can see, this thing is anything but problem free. I've had it for two days and I've already had two separate problems with it. But before I remind you what those problems were, I will tell you that in my next video, I'll show you guys how I almost burnt my garage down with this thing twice. So the problems that I had with it this time seem relatively small in comparison. Those problems being that it overheated once, then when it tried to restart, it flooded itself. The computer isn't smart enough to see that the temperature is dropping, therefore the flame has gone out, and so it just continues to dump fuel into the burn chamber. Then when it goes to restart the next time because it has an excessive amount of fuel, it overheats and this process continues over and over again. 
In the next video, I'll be pulling this thing apart, unfortunately more than once, and we'll be talking about some issues like burning down your garage. So that's gonna do it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll have another video coming soon. See you next time.